few new parts in me. I think the next thing they're going to replace should be my head. Um, but I don't know how much titanium they're going to put in that. I'm doing well. I don't do well if somebody just pokes something in me. I need to be cut open. and Everything needs to be replaced. So I have titanium in my left hip last July, right knee April, nine months apart, so I'm doing good. And, uh, uh, well, let me get on with this. My, my, go- my topic is a gospel that isn't a gospel. I can tell you what this is in three, three sentences. Number one, a gospel isn't a gospel when they tell you you have to work to get saved. Number two, a gospel isn't a gospel when they tell you you have to work to stay saved. Number three, a gospel isn't a gospel when they tell you you have to work to show you're saved. Work to get saved, work to stay saved, work to show you're saved. It's not a gospel. Heavenly Father, thank you once again for this time and for fellowship in your word. Um, As always, we we preach that, that we stand fast in this fight we're in right now. And I just pray each one of us keep that in our hearts uh, for the oncoming times that we're facing right now. And just, you know, know that we already have the victory. Amen. So, how many of you folks know the group Chicago? Do you like it? Well, I didn't. Many years ago, my wife introduced me to the group of Chicago. And I love them. I mean, I just love them. So, pay attention. As I was walking down the street one day, <laughs> a man came up to me and asked me what the time was that was on my watch. Yay! And I said, does anybody really know what time it is? Does anybody really care? If so, I can't imagine why. We've all got time enough to cry. Now, let me go over those verses again. Betty, I know you wanted to sing that, but I tried to sing one verse, uh, one Does anybody really know what time it is? What time is it? You have your dispensational clocks on? You should. It's a dispensation of grace. It's only been going on for 2,000 years, and how many Christians know, understand, and believe this? Not many. Um, There's a verse that I came upon a few years ago. I'm going to give you verses, because I'm not going to have you go to all of them, but... In Luke 12, 56, he says, Ye hypocrites, ye can't discern the face of the sky and the earth, but ye cannot discern this time. He calls them hypocrites. Is there another time when Jesus Christ calls his people hypocrites? Matthew 23, 15, which says, Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For ye compass sea and land to make one proselyte, and when he is made, you make him twofold more the child of hell than yourselves. If you don't know what time it is, as a Christian, you can definitely be saved, but you're going to hurt some people along the way because you're going to give them false information. So does anybody really care? There have always been caring people, but most important, Jesus Christ cared. People say, when I tell people, Jesus Christ doesn't pray for the lost. (gasps) No, he died for the lost. He tells people like us to go out and carry his word on to people. Preach the word. If so, it says here, I can't imagine why. Well, I know why. Because God wants all men to be saved then to come to the knowledge of the truth. 1 Timothy 1, 4, 2, 4. Go to Job 27. I want you to see this verse. Job 27. So does anybody really know what time it is? Yes, it's a dispensation of grace. It's 2016. Today is the... Uh, 12th, I think, of July. But we've all got time enough to cry. That is not true. For Job 27, let me read you verses 8 and 9. It says, Job 27, 8 and 9. For what is the hope of a hypocrite? Though he hath gained, when God taketh away his soul. God will hear his cry when trouble cometh upon him. He's not going to hear his cry. Let me give you a couple examples of Gospels that aren't Gospels. Go to Colossians 1 and Philippians chapter 2. Colossians 1 and Philippians 2. Now, my church at South Bend, I give an outline every time these things are written down so I can get through it much quicker. So I'm used to giving more verses, so... 
please excuse me for that. Colossians 1.10 says that ye might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work, and increasing in the knowledge of God. Who deserves the credit if you're doing the work of God? Do you? Philippians 1, 2, 13. For it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Anybody who teaches anything other than this is giving you a gospel that isn't a gospel. They're, they're, they're getting stuck on themselves. They're trying to get you stuck in yourself. Anything you, good you do, which comes from the Bible, we can't claim any credit for that. So these people that lift themselves up and they, they want a lofty position or whatever that is, it's, it's, it's not true. One of the things I say to people all the time, because I deal with a lot of people that are in the school, I was Paul's grader um, a while ago. He didn't, he didn't like me too much, but he called me and asked me questions. Because every time he called and asked me a question, I said, you know what the answer is. He knew it, and he did know it. But it's just, when you finish the school, if you don't realize how little you know, then you haven't learned the right thing that's being taught. Can I say that? That's, that's, that's an, a definite. Um, the prosperity gospel is not mature thinking. This is a gospel that isn't a gospel. It has you thinking improperly. Go to Philippians 4, please. Philippians 4. Has you thinking improperly. What is that? It's thinking of things, physical things, praying for things. You know, we don't pray for things. We pray in things. And that's hard to get across to a lot of people. Um, you're not thinking about what you already have. We're blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. Um, he has supplied all our needs, singular, Philippians 4.19. Colossians 3.24, we we're going to get a reward, singular, not rewards. The need that has been fulfilled is our salvation. We have the victory. And we're still walking and talking around here. Now, the third one really gets me. How many of you have gone other, to other websites and is Christian and you looked up what they believe, their doctrinal statement? What do most of them say if, as far as what is their final authority? Boy, this squeaks a lot, just like home. Okay. What, are the, what do you think it says? Most of the churches you'll go to, it says, we only believe in the originals, the original autographs. Can anybody produce those? No. This, that is a statement of unbelief. It is incorrect thinking. Why? Because they're not in existence. Inspiration without preservation? This gives every heretic in the world to do what they want, make themselves God, or tell people that they're, they're the conduit for God. It's incorrect. That's the most important thing. Which Bible? Under that, 2 Timothy 2.15. That really gets me worked up. This is a gospel that isn't a gospel. What exactly is Christian maturity? To know what time it is. You can discern the face of the sky and the earth, but you hypocrites, but you can't discern this time. You come to sea and land, and you find somebody, and you make them a proselyte, you make them twofold more of the child of hell. You're really doing God's work, aren't you? You have to know the verses. You have to know them backwards and forwards, and they're not, you, you might not memorize them, but you know where to go in the Bible. That's what great school of the Bible does. And I thank God it's organized, because I'm not. I thank God for that. And I, I had the, the opportunity to tell a lot of people that, too, talk to them about that. And it's wonderful when you're grading papers for somebody to see the growth. Um, Paul called me at every, every level of growth, excited, doing cheetah flips. And by the way, there's a Joanne back there, but there's another friend I have. By, her name is Joanne also, and she's almost 82, and she's doing cheetah flips over the, over the gospel, over this, this message. And I just wanted to say hi to her. Paul says, if you go to 1 Corinthians 16, he says, watch you, 
Watch ye stand fast in the faith. Quit you like men. Be strong. You know what the Greek word for quit you like men is? I don't know it either. But it's the only time it's used in the New Testament, in, in the Greek. It's the only time it's used. If you search through Paul's epistles and find some words and phrases, there's many of them that's only used in his epistles for a lot of reasons that we know of. An adult understands punctuality. A few years ago, when my son had a job, it was hard to get him up to be at his job at 6 in the morning. Then he finished high school. Then he went to college for a year. And he didn't want any more college. He had that young man wanderlust. And so I was looking for places for him to go that wouldn't cost us a lot of money. And the first place I looked at was Turkey, but it's 99.9% Muslim. So that's not the place. When he ended up going to Israel, living on a kibbutz for two or three months. And he lives there and works there. He gets fed, and they, and, they, and they pay him. And his job started at 4 in the morning. He had to go take a shower and put on special clothing. He worked in the chicken house. And there's a big, you know, he did something with their beaks, burned them some way or whatever. You know, for, but this is chickens for sale. And when he got home, I didn't have to tell him when to get up. He was up. He, he knew it. I, I, I didn't have to tell him that anymore. Um, he learned punctuality. When, when he came back from there, he had applied to AmeriCorps, for those of you who know what that is. Uh, he did a 10-month tour in AmeriCorps. AmeriCorps is people that, young people that go for 10 months and they do certain things around the country to help, help the country. He was involved with forest fires. He was down in New Orleans putting roofs on houses. He was in the Galveston uh, uh, hurricane and the FEMA shelter health. You know, all kinds of things. And I'm proud of my son for serving his country without carrying a rifle. He did that. Go to Acts chapter 20 and 2 Timothy 2. Acts chapter 20 and 2 Timothy 2. This is what time it is. Some of these verses you'll have to, I mean, individual, you'll have to know where to go exactly. It's, it's, the, only, it's the only verse that says the gospel of the grace of God, basically. Or well, the first one. It says, verse 24, But none of these things move me, neither count I my life dear unto myself, so that I might finish my course with joy, and the ministry which I have received of the Lord Jesus, to testify the gospel of the grace of God. In the last words of God to mankind, in 2 Timothy, Paul says, I have fought a good fight, I have finished my course, I have kept the faith. And that's what all of us want to be able to say when our time comes. Do we find many Christians that are open and mature enough to understand and receive and believe this message? Well, you know we don't. I tell people, and I, I probably say this every year, that we get calls from all over the country, and people are just starving for fellowship. Debbie and I were over fellowship because of the phones. You know, I, I tell people, good thing both of us hadn't wanted to quit on the same day. Now, that's a joke, but the point is, we, we, get the, we, we get the good and the bad, and we get more good than people who aren't living close in this area. People, when they, come on, when they turn on to this truth, this the, the dispensational truth, when they begin to understand it, and I don't care how old you are or how young you are, it's like a new book. And I have the opportunity to tell them, because I settled this with Rick right away, they're going to be able to take the test with an open Bible and using their notes. Because when you get old, you don't remember as much as well as you used to. But the point is, they go back in their notes and they learn twice, and they get it. And take away that stigma that we're going to be standing over you with a ruler and wrapping your knuckle. We're not under the law, we're under grace. Now, Christians don't want to mature this way. No, I'm not saying I'm totally mature either. Just ask my wife. But what does Paul say about his maturity in Philippians 3? Does he say he's apprehended this high level of maturity? He doesn't. If my pattern says this, that's good enough for me. Although I still want to keep trying. 
Most everything I'm going to talk about today can be found in other Bibles, and I use five other Bibles. The Revised Standard Version, the American Standard Version, the New International Version, the New King James Version, and the New American Standard Version. Abraham was told to circumcise Isaac. Prior to this, he was uncircumcised. Genesis 15, 6, don't go there, and Romans 4. He was justified in uncircumcision so that Christ could be the father of all, all those who believe. First, his name was Abram, exalted father. Then his name was Abraham, the father of many nations, Romans 4, 17. Now, I went in all five of those Bibles, and they conveyed the same truth that we can read in our Bible. So if you know what to look for, you can find it in those other Bibles. You might not find every single verse like 2 Timothy 2.15, but it's, it's there. But just look for it. Um, go to Acts 17. Acts 17. So Abraham means the father of many nations. This does not translate the father of all nations. Acts 17, 26 and 27. And hath made of one blood all nations and men for to dwell on all the face of the earth. And hath determined the times before appointed and the bounds of their habitation that they should seek the Lord if happily, therefore they might feel after him and find him though he be not far from every one of us. This fact alone should tell you that internationalism it's satanic, the time we're in right now. It's not the first time it's happened in the world. How many of you watch TV? Come on, I want to see more hands. Chicken. Anyway, I was watching a Glenn Ford movie not too long ago, and I had an excuse. I was icing my knee. Um, and I heard, he was a good guy, 50, movie of 1950 Cowboys. And all of a sudden, one of the Cowboys said, the only thing bad you can say about God is that he invented people. <laughs> I thought that was good. Everything I'm talking about is fundamental doctrine. And most Christians don't understand that. That's why we have to be, well, I don't know, I don't have the right word for it. Maybe more meek when dealing with people, which I have trouble doing. But, you know, I've hurt some people sometimes. Maybe I've talked to a lot. I don't know. But we have to be very careful how we approach other people. We have to teach patient and make this instructing those that oppose themselves. If God prevents or will give them repentance because they're caught by Satan. Now, the physical training therapy I had for the knee, the knee is tougher than, than the hip, I can tell you right away. But they're not religiously affiliated with, affiliated with anybody, but I saw this, this plaque on the wall. It said, never be afraid to open your heart to the truth. Don't forget, amateurs built the ark and professionals built the Titanic. <laughs> Basically, you can divide the Gospels and the Bibles in three, section, three sections. You got the, the prophetic Gospels. The gospel of the kingdom, the gospel of the circumcision, and then you read about an angel in Revelation 16 preaching the everlasting gospel. That is the gospel of the kingdom. Then you have the gospels of the dispensation of grace. You have the gospel of grace. You have the gospel of the uncircumcision. It's also called the everlasting gospel. In 2 Timothy 4.17, Paul says, Notwithstanding, the Lord stood with me and strengthened me, that by me the preaching might be fully known and that all the Gentiles might hear. Now, if you're a Christian, you don't understand this truth. What would they do if, when you re read them this verse? Paul it says, according to this, you know, Paul was the last one to, to, speak to speak God's words. The last epistle, the last words of God in our Bible is 2 Timothy. So what would a Christian apologist, somebody went to a Christian cemetery and came back, but they really didn't understand rightly dividing word of truth? If you gave him that truth. Well, I did that one time. And the guy said the Holy Spirit made a mistake when he chose Matthias. It should have been Paul. 
Now, the other group of Gospels is the Gospel of God, the Gospel of Christ, and the Gospel of Peace. They're interdispensational. Both programs end in peace. Now, if you would, I want you to go here to Colossians chapter 2. Let me read you verses um, 1 and 2, 2 and 3. There are three mysteries, vital information missing in some of the versions. Colossians chapter 2, verse 3. That their hearts might be comforted, being knit together in love, and unto all riches of the full assurance of understanding, to the acknowledgement of the mystery of God, and of the Father, and of Christ. So you have three mysteries there. Mystery of God, mystery of the Father, and mystery of Christ. Do these three mysteries have, can you find them in a verse anywhere? Let me give them to you. Let me give them to you. Revelation 10, 7 says, But in the days of the voice of the seventh angel, when he shall begin to sound, the mystery of God shall be finished, as he hath declared to his servants the prophets. Mystery of God is the prophetic program. Ephesians 3, verses 4 and 5, Whereby when ye read, ye may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ, which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men, as it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. The mystery of Christ is the unprophesied mystery program we're in right now. To make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery, Ephesians 3, 9. Now, Ephesians chapter 1, I'm not going to start at verse 3, but it talks about the Father. Verses 9 and 10, having made known unto us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he had purposed in himself, that in the dispensation of the fullness of times he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him. This is the mystery of the Father. Now, if you don't have this information in Colossians 2, verses 2 and 3 in newer Bibles, you're going to miss out on this. This is a vital piece of information. I tell people that we preach the reality of this present evil world. To me, it's a no-brainer. Is the world easy to get through? I mean, nobody here has had problems. Is anybody not getting old? You haven't lost a job? Somebody, you haven't been fired? Your wife hasn't yelled at you lately? You know what I say? God loves me and sometimes my wife. I'm a happy man. But we preach reality. I want you to get two words. Reason and logic. I'll give you an algebraic formula. If A equals B... And then B equals C, then A equals C, right? Reason is a faculty of the mind by which it distinguishes truth from falsehood and good from evil. That's Romans 2, verses 14 and 15. Logic. It's from, from reason to speak. Logic is the art of un, using reason well in our inquiries after the truth and the communication of it to others. Now, how many of you are married? Would you say, I'm, I've heard this term before, that marriage is love. You've heard that term? Have you heard the term that love is blind? Now, would it be logical for me to take this information and come with this conclusion? Therefore, we conclude that, uh, that love is an institution for the blind. <laughs> That's not good logic. There are times when my greatest accomplishment is keeping my mouth shut. Then we move on to the word knowledge, gnosis and epinosis. Gnosis is knowledge to know and understand. Epinosis is an advanced, deeper knowledge of God in the sense of, there's this one fellow by the name of Lenski said, there may be false, a false gnosis, but never a false epinosis. Epinosis is a true, deeper understanding knowledge that is personally embraced. When you're reading Romans, that's foundational doctrine. When you're in Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, that's, this is gnosis. This is epinosis. It doesn't make you perfect, but it's a higher level of understanding. That's why we tell people who, who are new to this, we tell them to memorize the first 11 verses of Romans 5 or, and, or 
just read the first eight chapters or the first five chapters of the book of Romans over and over and over again to get it in your brain. It's so important. So important. Paul says in Philippians, or 1 Timothy 2, verses 3 and 4, For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who will have all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. There's that word, epinosis. Philippians 1, 9 says, And I, this I pray, that your love may abound yet more and more in knowledge and in all judgment. There's that epinosis. Here's one you'll recognize. 2 Timothy 3, 7. Ever learning and able, never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. That's that epinosis. Turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 5. 2 Corinthians 5, sorry. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. If you're not saved, your resurrected, your resurrected life is going to be terrible. Just like Carl talked about. What is a lake of fire? It's a lake of fire. What is burning in hell? You're burning in hell. It's exactly what the Bible says. In 2 Corinthians 5, 10, and 11, it says, For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may receive the things done in his body. According to that he hath done, whether it be good or bad. And here's the verse. Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men, but we are made manifest unto God, and I trust also are made manifest in your consciences. Is this terror talking about us? Does this belong to us? No. We're saved. We go to the judgment seat of Christ, but that has nothing to do with our salvation. But we do know the terror of the Lord, and Carol explained it well with his uh, electronic equipment here. I have the same stuff at home. So I did, I did took the, the word terror, and I did a treasury of scripture knowledge search on that. And it only brought me to verses outside of Paul's epistles, before and after. So that terror is talking about hell. And then I said, we persuade. Well, I did a treasury of scripture knowledge on, on this, and you find it in Paul's epistles, um, when he's talking in the book of Acts, but there's only one verse that was in, in, in this, and Carl quoted it, Luke 16, 31, and he said unto them, if they hear not Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded, though one rose from the dead. Translated for today, 1 Timothy 1, 16 says, Paul is our pattern for salvation. People say that we worship Paul. No, Paul says, if you be followers of me, you're followers of Christ. He says it twice for a reason. Now, the word now in this passage. But we are made, but I should say, but we are made manifest. I put but now. The verses I ran in that are all in Paul's epistles. So let me read you a couple of verses. First one will be 2 Corinthians 2, verse 17. Paul says, for we are not as many which corrupt the word of God, but as of sincerity, but as of God, in the sight of God speak we in Christ. Chapter 5 of 2 Corinthians 5, chapter, I'm sorry, verse, 2 Corinthians 5, 11. It says, but as we are allowed of God to be put in trust with the gospel, even so we speak, not as pleasing men, but God with trieth our hearts. If you compare the results of not being saved to being saved, is there any contest? Well, how do we get that across to people? How do we get them to believe that? How do we get them to come to a point in life where they really need that? They, they know they need it. We don't know. There's no formula for that. You never know what link in the chain you're going to be to get people there. You try your, your dead level best to do it in a, in a good manner. And, you know, we weren't appointed to be sex, successful, just, just faithful. Paul says in 2 Corinthians 5, 8, We are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Is there any soul sleep you read about in there? Is there any rest we take before we go to our next destination? For me to live as Christ and to die as gain. Which one sounds better, that 
And what Matthew 10 says, And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Which one would you want? Which one sounds better? It's a no-brainer, right? I'm going to quote a verse now that I quoted last year, but I got a couple more with it. Ecclesiastes 7 1. A good name is better than precious ointment in the day of death than the day of one's birth. The moment you're born, you're on the way to being dead. Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 12. For wisdom, now in this context, it's talking about skill and war. For wisdom is the defense, and money is a defense. But the excellency of the knowledge is that wisdom giveth life to them that have it. David's sitting down here. He's alive. God's talking about giving life to somebody who's already alive. It can't be talking about physical life. It has to be talking about something spiritual, something that you can't taste, touch, feel, but you can know about it because we've been given brains that can reason, use logic most of the time. Deuteronomy 30, verse 19, Paul, uh, Moses says, I call heaven and earth to record this day against you that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing, therefore choose life, that both thou and thy seed may live. Proverbs 8, 35. For whoso findeth me shall obtain favor of the Lord. Hebrews 9, 27. And it's appointed unto men what's to die. But after this, the judgment. Am I using great plainness of speech? Do you have any trouble understanding what I'm trying to say? If anybody comes up with a formula to do this on other people where we won't offend them, I'd like to know. Remember, I'm the husband and the secretary for that great school of the Bible. There's two women to tell Rick what to do, his wife and my wife. I took the word delusion, and I looked it up. Delusion is only used twice in the Old Testament. If you want to go there, go ahead. Isaiah 66. And they get Isaiah 3. Isaiah 66 and Isaiah 3. We get some good calls. You know, you hear people, they, they, it doesn't matter. There's no age limit. And it's, it's wonderful. Then we get other kind of calls, too. And sometimes I have to raise my voice a little bit, which I'm very capable of doing, by the way. Isaiah 66, verses 3 and 4. Yea, they have chosen their own ways, and their soul delighteth in their, in their abominations. I also will choose their delusions. There's the verse. And I will bring their, their fears upon them, because when I called, none did answer. When I spake, they did not hear. But they did evil before mine eyes and chose that which I delighted not. Now flip back to Isaiah chapter 3, and I'll show you the word again, how it's used. Isaiah chapter 3, if you read through that, you'll see a lot of parallels with our country and the world right now, when Israel was in a low in my period. Isaiah 3 verse 4, it says, And I will give children to be their princes, and babes shall rule over them. That word babes is the same word as delusion in Isaiah 66. The Greek word in, in the delusion in the New Testament is used ten times. The only time it is translated as delusion is in second, if you would go there, second Thessalonians chapter two. Other translations of this Greek word is error, deceive and deceit. But in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, let me start at verse 3. Paul says, Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he is God, sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God, remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things? A gospel that isn't a gospel when people try to mix revelation with our message today. 
You can draw a crowd if you do that, but it's incorrect. You're taking away the comfort, the internal peace that grace gives us. And that makes me angry. And now you know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. What's withholding the devil from coming? The dispensation of grace, the church, the body of Christ. We are withholding that time period. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now letteth will let. That means hold back until he be taken out of the way. The church, the body of Christ, the one new man, when we get raptured out of here. And then shall that wicked, capital W, be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy it with the brightness of his coming. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish because they received not the love of the truth that they might be saved. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe alive, that all that they all might be damned who believe not the truth, but have pleasure in unrighteousness. God's going to send them what they want. You didn't want the truth, I'm going to give it to you. You know what the word husbandry means? Morris would know it. It means a cultivated field. field. Paul talks about, about us building on the foundation of Jesus Christ. Gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, and stubble. Now, all of us are going to have wood, hay, and stubble. Wood, hay, and stubble. I don't know how much gold, silver, and precious stones we'll hit. We'll hit. We'll hit. But he says, your labor is together with God. You're God's husband. You're God's building. But we know, I know a lot of people, because of the phone calls I get, they are saved. They understand the gospel of grace. They don't know where to go to get it, but they tell me the right words. They don't know it's first found in the book of Romans. And the first time any good meaning of the word blood is in Romans 3.25. They don't know that. But they say it because they heard it. And they usually go back to John 3.16, and that's, that's not for us today. John wrote five books. He's never told to write to Gentiles. It says here, If a man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved, yet so is by fire. So if you go to the judgment seat, or when we go to the judgment seat of Christ, if all our works are burned off, are we going to go to hell? Now, listen to this. I hope um, Morris finds this interesting because I found a word, a definition for, for inflation. And it kind of made me think of this. Inflation is the case of a farmer eating his own seed corn in the winter and having nothing left to plant in the spring. Later, he will starve. When we go to the judge at seed of Christ and all we had is wood, hand stubble, do we still have the victory? How much better can it get than that? Now, so I look around the room, I can see most of the people are old enough to remember a movie that came out in the mid-60s. Remember the movie, Serve with Love? To Serve with Love? Sidney Poitier? He played a man that's an educated man from Africa that was waiting for his dream job. He knew it was going to come, he just didn't know when. In the inter interim, he decided to take a job teaching seniors in an inner-city, tough London school. So you can imagine what happened in the movie. He goes in, and the kids don't think much of him. He's trying to get their attention, trying to get their respect, and they're not giving it. And you see this throughout the movie. Finally, they get it. Now... When we go to high school, you're usually about 14 years old, and you get out when you're 18. When you're 18, you can join the military without your parents' consent. You're supposed to be an adult. This is from 19, 14 years old, you're still a little kid, to when you're 18. A very important age in our lives. Go to 2 Corinthians chapter 2. Let me read to verses 14 through 17. Second Corinthians 2, 14 through 17. Now thanks be unto God, which always causes us to triumph in Christ, make it manifest the savor of his knowledge 
by us in every place. For we are, a, we are under God a sweet savor of Christ in them that are saved and in them that perish. To the one, we are the, we are the savor of death unto death. And to the other, the savor of life unto life. And who is sufficient for these things? For we are not as many which corrupt the word of God, but as of sincerity, but as of God, in the sight of God, speak we in Christ. How many of you remember that movie? How many of you remember the song? The song titled, To Serve With Love. I think Lulu was her name. She was married to the oldest Bee Gees for about three years. That's all, that's all I know. Um, but she sang, she, she was an actress in there, and she, she, she sang the title song. When I hear music, I usually don't hear the words. I, I stick with the music. But this I remembered. They're, the, they're going to graduate, and everybody loves each other now. He got them past the hump to realize that they need to be, need to be responsible citizens. And some of the words in the song says, he, he's taken us from crayons to perfume. Now, perfume is something that you smell. For we are under God a sweet savor of Christ. I thought, wow. 1 Corinthians 13, 11, and 12, when I was a child, I spake as a child, I understood as a child, I thought as a child, but when I became a man, I put away childish things. God's talking about non-dispensational teaching. When people call us and they want to know whether it's a, there's a right division church or a group around them, if we can't find anything, we'll find a, a Baptist. Some, we'll, we'll check the Internet to see if they, at least they preach the gospel that saves. And we'll send them there. 1 Corinthians 14, 20, Paul says, Brethren, be not children in understanding, howbeit in malice be ye children, but in understanding be men. Ladies, that goes for you too. A man knows something has to be done. He arrives there at a certain time. He does the job. And, and that's a sign of a man. But 1 Corinthians 15, verses 55 through 57, it says, O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin. And the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. So, we want to go from gnosis to epinosis, from milk to meat, from childhood to adulthood, from crayons to perfume. God calls us to epinosis via his written word. As a Christian, you should know what time it is. Dear Lord, thank you for this, for this time in your word and the burdens you put on our hearts and minds that we... Well, I just can't thank you enough for what your son did and revealed to us. Amen.